Hi everyone, my name is Alexi and today I'm gonna show you how I built my own 50 pound power hammer. So this video is the last of a three-part series where I'm going to show you how I build this machine. In this final part, we're going to finish the power hammer and I'm going to show you how to adjust everything properly. And again, if you want to follow along and build a hammer for yourself, we do have the plans available for you in the description below. On that, let's finish the hammer. Now that everything runs fairly well, it's time to make a counterweight to try to balance the shaft. It won't be perfect because it's impossible to balance. It's almost 70 pounds here, over here. But anything that will add up weight on the opposite side will help a lot. So this is the last part of the counterweight. It's a half inch plate. There's two of them with the three quarter plates in the back and I hope it should be enough to make a difference in the power hammer balance. As you can see, it runs really well, so I just need to dis disassemble everything to be able to paint. Before painting, it's always a good thing to degrease everything. Now that everything is painted, it's time for the reassembly.
So the next step with reassembling this hammer is once all these bows and counter nut are in these holes, we need to adjust all of them to make sure the ram slide nicely in the ram guide. So the first step in the adjustment of the ram guide is to make sure that the ram can touch this part here that holds the UHMW sliders, plastic sliders in. So as you can see here, the ram is touching this part. So I'll tighten these nuts in order to prevent the, the ram from touching. It's no longer touching, I'm good. And I'll go, I'll do this for all four sides here. Once the bottom is made, we just need to do the same on the top. So we just want to make sure that the ram can touch all of these sides of the holder here. And we just want to hand tighten. If needed, you can use a ratchet, but we don't want to crush the plastic sliders in. Once all the top and bottom nuts are all hand tightened and they don't touch the top and bottom guide, we can now tighten the two sides both just hand tight to make sure they just barely touch the, the ram itself. Once this is done, we can just tighten the counter nut to make sure all these boats don't move anymore. And you should test it every at every step you tighten these boats. You should test it just to make sure everything runs freely. And once you're done, tighten all these counter nut and you should be good to go. It's now time to fix the safety switch in a easily accessible place. Now that the hammer is finished, it's time to anchor it down in the concrete. The best way to anchor the machine is to drill a hole, fill it with epoxy, put the ultra in and bolt it down. Now that the epoxy anchors are cured, we can now bolt down the hammer. So now that the hammer is running smoothly, I'll show you all the issues I had making my hammer. So the first issue I had while making the hammer was that the spacing between the two dies was too big. So to solve the problem, I had to raise the lower die with two half inch plate shims to make the hammer run more smoothly. In the plans, the anvil will get over here, but if you plan working with larger stock, you can cut your handvil half inch shorter and get yourself a half inch shim. So this way 
If you're working with really large stock, you can lower your die by half of an inch. So the second issue I had was that the arm link were hitting on the ram, so I had to cut grooves to make more room for the arms. Of course, in the plans, the dimensions are adjusted. So you might have noticed, but during the construction, the motor was on the left side over here. And I had an issue with that because the motor is a single rotation only and as soon as it was touching the tire it was pulling itself into the transmission so I switched the motor of the, on the other side and it solved the problem so now let's talk about the adjustment the first important thing with your hammer is your spring um, I, st I tested a few different springs and this one is the best it's listed in the plans it's a McMaster car part so it's really easy to get so the spring tension is probably the most critical adjustment you'll need to get. It will be a bit different for everyone depending on the stock you're working. But as a reference, mine is currently at a six and three quarters compression. It's a good reference point to start with because it's a, let's say, average stock working capacity. You should start with that. Another good reference is the spacing between the two dies. It should be approximately one and five eighths of an inch while the hammer is in neutral. Now it's time to adjust the brake assembly. My preferred way of adjusting this hammer is that as soon as the contact wheel on the motor touch the tire, the brake should barely, barely lift off the surface of the tire. This way, as soon as I let go of the pedal, it breaks immediately. So now let's talk about maintenance. I'll give you a few little tips and tricks to maintain your hammer in proper shape. I'm currently using ISO 68 oil to lubricate the whole hammer, but maybe I will switch to a bit thicker oil that will stick a bit more to the surfaces. Every time you're using your hammer, you should at the very least lube the ram on all four sides. And after that, every few hours, you should lube the pivot point of the DuPont linkage. So the next maintenance tip is that the, the UHMW sliders will wear out over time. It's normal. And you should be able to push them a bit further with the, the wear with these boats. Once they're finished, you can easily get UHMW on McMaster car and change the, the sliders. So now let's talk about safety. Full disclaimer, this machine is really dangerous to operate and to build. So it's your responsibility to take all safety precaution needed around this hammer. So the first thing you should be aware of is to keep your hands clear of this zone. Of course, two die hitting each other is really dangerous. The next dangerous zone is this rotating part here. These could hurt you and this could hurt you. So keep your hands away from there. A really good idea would be to build a guard to cover this rotating assembly. It's not in the plan, but you should do it. Or at the very least, you should cover the spring because this part could break and go flying everywhere. The last bit of precaution you should take is when running the hammer, you should try to never let the, those two hardened steel die hit each other. Because they are hardened, they could break. So you should at the very least put a piece of wood or hot steel between these two. So this is it for the last part of this series. If you have any question about the project, leave them in the comment section. If you want the plans, they are available in the description below. And as always, we really hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing. See you in the next one. A la prochaine.